My name is Jay Dunn, and uh, I am a chiropractic physician. That is my real first name, just the letter J. That's all I got, so if you're wondering. Uh, I practiced in New Mexico for the last 32 years as a chiropractor, but I do, as uh, Cynthia mentioned, I do kinesiology. I, a show of hands of anybody who's heard of it or had it done. Good, 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 good. Amazing. That's awesome. It's becoming a little more mainstream, which is an amazing thing. I think it's an incredible tool for finding out what's going on in the body. And as a, a chiropractor, I also studied functional medicine. I was into nutrition. I did emotional work. Uh, I felt like my practice was really well-rounded, and I had a very successful practice. But there were things that bothered me, um, questions I had about patients I couldn't make any progress with where I tried everything. I did all the quadrants for health kind of things. You know, I looked at their lifestyle. I, we looked at their emotional uh, issues. We did uh, nutrition with them. We adjusted them. But they weren't responding like other people did. And those are the people that we take home as practitioners. We don't think about the people we've helped. We think about the ones that we can't get well. Am I, am I right? Um, those are the ones that keep us up at night. And so, uh, you know, I knew there was something we were missing. I knew there was a missing piece, and I was always looking. And I was hearing this word methylation, which you said several times, um, and maybe many of you don't know what methylation is, because it's a fairly new concept. Um, and I was like, what is that? And I, so I went to the internet, and I started Googling uh, methylation, and I, got, I came across this video uh, by a guy named uh, Rich von Koeninenberg, and he was, uh, he was a, an engineer, actually, but his son had chronic fatigue syndrome, and so he began to kind of devote himself to studying chronic fatigue syndrome, myalgic encephalitis. Um, and he ran across a woman who was a geneticist turned naturopath. And he started working with genes, with genetic variants in what's called the methylation pathway. The methylation pathway is a pathway in the body that has to do with how we detox, how we make neurotransmitters, as you mentioned, how we um, make energy out of our food. Uh, how we make nitric oxide. It has a lot to do with our cardiovascular system, brain chemistry, hormones, et cetera. It's a very important pathway, and as a chiropractic physician, we never learned about it. I, I never heard of it in chiropractic school. And so I, I became obsessed with, with Googling this methylation thing and learning about genetics. Uh, and so what I found was, as I watched this video, I, I was like, this is it. This is the missing piece. I know it is. You know when you get chills when you know you're on the right track? And I thought about the patients that I had that I knew I couldn't get well, and I knew there was something there. There was a nugget there. And so I've really devoted myself to studying this whole genetic piece. And I owe a lot to a, a vote of gratitude to Amy Yasko, who is, uh, again, a geneticist turned naturopath. She began to work with very severe neurological problems, the ALSs and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, and uh, is now devoted to autism, which is an amazing thing. She's using genetic reports, which I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk to you about how we do that, um, to analyze people's biochemistry and find genetic variants in their, uh, in their reports, in their genetic reports, that keep them from detoxing thoroughly. So when we look at uh, the rates of autism going up, uh, I think there's a very real component that has to do with the genetics. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to give you a little introduction to this because it's a kind of complicated topic, but I'm going to try to simplify it for you a little bit. So one of the things that, again, that we were doing as natural health care practitioners is, you know, we're, we weren't looking at the symptoms. We're, we're beyond looking at the symptoms. We look at the root causes. We're looking at you know, what is their lifestyle, what are, what are they, uh, you know, what are they eating, what are they, are they getting chiropractic care, are they sleeping well, all of those things. We prided ourselves in getting to that. And again, the one missing piece that we couldn't get to was genetics. So some of the questions I had, my father died in, when he was 55 of lung cancer. It wasn't a big mystery. He did everything he could to get lung cancer, He's smoking and drinking, and he was on a mission, and it worked. But the really interesting thing is his best friend, uh, who subsequently became my stepdad, his name was George, uh, did the same thing. <laughs> I know, there's a story there. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> he did the same thing, but he lived another 30 years. You know, they both smoked two packs of cigarettes a day and drank and never exercised. I don't think they would know a vegetable if they saw it. And you're like, what is that green thing? 
Um, but, but what's the difference? And the only thing I, that you can come up with is that has to be genetics, right? That has to be that missing piece. And um, my own health, I had chronic fatigue syndrome since I was 16, and depression, lifelong depression. Wasn't severe, but it was definitely, you know, low level kind of thing where I'd always had to talk myself into, let's be, you know, go listen to Wayne Dyer, or go listen to Bruce Lipton, or get, you know, I always had to kind of lift myself up a little bit. Um, but my set point was always down here. And I, I kind of beat myself up about it. Like, what's the matter with me? I have a really good life. I do all the right things. I'm a chiropractic physician. I know what to eat. I know what to do. And I did them, and it didn't work. So I knew something was missing for me as well. Um, and I, so then I got my genetics tested. Once I learned how to do it, um, this is how new genetic testing is. May 2006 was when the last chromosome was published. This is part of the genome project where they were able to map out all the genetic pieces in our body and give them a number or a name. Ongoing research since then has shown that if you have a genetic variant in a particular gene that has to do with something like how well you absorb vitamin D or how well you absorb B12 or B6, it can really affect your brain chemistry as you, as you kind of brought up. This is all very brand new. So they're doing genome-wide association studies where they're looking at things like if you, uh, Parkinson's. They take a whole group of people who have Parkinson's and look at their genetics, and a whole group of people that don't have Parkinson's and look at their genetics, and they look at, okay, these people have this genetic variant and these don't, therefore this genetic variant is associated with Parkinson's. That's kind of how they do the studies. You can't really clone people and do studies on them, <laughs> it turns out, yet. <laughs> Maybe that will come. Um, so to give you a little bit of the background about how this works, up in, here's the cell up there. You know, we're all familiar with the cell and then the chromosomes inside of the nucleus. And as Bruce, as you pointed out, Bruce Lipton has talked about, we used to think that that was the brains of the cell. Now we know that's actually the gonads and the brain is actually on the mem brain. <laughs> I like that. Um, but taking apart that chromosome, you know, how many pairs of chromosomes do we have? Do you guys know? 23, um, they, you unwind the chromosomes and those little base pairs you see there, that CGAT, those are our DNA bases basically. So um, those are our blueprint for making a particular enzyme or a protein in the body. They tell our body, this is, I want you to make the enzyme, for instance, that helps us absorb vitamin D. That's one of my favorite genetic variants. If you don't make that enzyme correctly, then your ability to absorb vitamin D is greatly impaired, and vitamin D, as you probably all know, is, is critical for our health. It's how we make neurotransmitters. It's how we make dopamine and serotonin. It's how our immune system works correctly. Um, it's how we absorb nutrients. Vitamin D very much involved in bone density and immune health. Uh, many, many aspects of our health rely on our vitamin D levels. Um, and if you can't absorb it, if you genetically can't absorb it, then you have a genetic predisposition for low levels of those brain chemicals. Does that make some sense? So as I was looking at the quadrants of health and I'm trying everything to get my depression lifted, it wasn't working because I had a genetic variant. I had the vitamin D receptor variant. My code for making that enzyme is impaired because of what I inherited from my parents. So the key to getting that enzyme to working properly then was to upregulate certain nutrients in my body, one of which was vitamin K, the other one was A and D. And when I started taking those cofactors to making that enzyme work correctly, my body started upregulating my absorption of vitamin D. I started making dopamine and serotonin, and my depression was gone. My chronic fatigue syndrome, gone. And when I did the research, when I started to look at what does the vitamin D receptor do, increases your susceptibility to lung cancer if you smoke. And I went, aha. That answered huge questions for me why I had never been able to get on top of my Epstein-Barr infection and chronic fatigue syndrome, why I was always depressed. It wasn't a, a personal issue. It was really, there was really an underlying cause there and why my father died so prematurely when he smoked. So that's the lifestyle factors. You know, if he hadn't smoked, he likely would have, have been fine. Whereas George smoked, but he didn't have that genetic variant. So it made, it made a lot of sense to me and I went, oh, this is huge, this is big. I think we've, we've stumbled onto some big issues here. So we're, we're looking at, it, it can be as simple as a change in the DNA base pair. It's what we call a single nucleotide polymorphism. 
that T, where this, this is the recipe, basically, that top one, that's the recipe for making the enzyme, and you inherited a C instead of a T in that one spot, that simple change will change the recipe for making an enzyme in your body, and your ability to absorb certain nutrients will be greatly impaired. If you get, you have one gene from your mom, one gene from your dad, if both of those genes are a variation, then it's what we call homozygous and you're reduced by about 70% in your ability to absorb a nutrient, which is big. When you, come, when you look at B12, or you look at you know, the vitamin D, or um, folic acid is another, is another biggie. So it's simple to do. You, you can go to Ancestry DNA. This is the DNA um, testing site that we're using now. It's only $79.99. It's come a long way from the thousands of dollars that it used to be to get your genetic testing done. You spit in a tube. Just, you can just go on this website. You, as a layperson, just can order it, have it sent to your house, spit in the tube, send it back. And you can look at your ancestry, which is kind of fun. You know, where did you come from? And, you know, you're, lots of surprises there. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> Find relatives. But you also, uh, we, I am developing a, a program, a, com a computer program, where you can upload that DNA information, and it will spit out a report for you that will say, okay, you're homozygous for the vitamin D receptor. Therefore, the nutrient levels that you need more of because of this are vitamin K2, vitamin A, and vitamin D. Um, and anything you can do to get your dopamine levels up is beneficial, including sunshine, you know, getting out there and getting some sun. So it'll give you lifestyle recommendations, nutrient recommendations, and dietary recommendations. So it's gonna be a pretty amazing little program. Uh, it's due to come out tomorrow. Yay. <laughs> yes. So what uh, my mission is to teach doctors how to do this. So I'm traveling all around the country, and I give classes, uh, and I teach physicians of all kinds how to analyze this data, because it's so big. As these doctors have pointed out, autism is, is huge, and it's getting worse and worse and worse, and mental health issues, worse and worse and worse. And it is, I think, again, a combination of looking at genetics, being able to modify your nutrition based on your specific genetic profile is a very powerful tool for getting some answers to our children especially. Uh, I've had some amazing turnarounds. I had a young girl that was cutting uh, and she didn't want to live. You know, she sat on the table and said, yeah, I'm, I just don't want to live. I don't want to be here anymore. 14 years old. and. I put her, uh, I gave her supplement program, we did her testing, and I do it through muscle testing and through the genetic report, uh, kind of uh, corroborating uh, both aspects. And we put her on the, the supplementation, and I was working on her parents, and she came back an hour later, and she goes, I'm better. I mean, that quick, the brain chemistry can change. That is powerful, that's a really powerful thing. And so, it's important to me, I'm very passionate about getting the, the message out there. I'm no longer practicing, I'm actually down in the keys playing, learning how to play again, which is so great, and doing this research and really developing ways that we can make inroads into helping as many people as possible. So uh, I'm working with Michelle in this Quadrants of Health thing. You know, she got real excited about the genetic piece because I think we have some real inroads into some very amazing answers. It's the combination of our lifestyle and nutrition and our genetics that, that will be a big piece of it. This is just what you, this is the raw data that you get back when you do your genetic test. And that's the, that's the piece that we put into your, um, into the computer program and it'll spit out, you know, what, where your genetic variants are and where your best uh, lifestyle changes can be. But that's how it works. You got your dad stripey's going this way and mama's going that way and you got, <laughs> that's how, how you end up. <laughs> Kind of a crapshoot. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> so this is what the report will look like. Um, we, uh, I'm doing this in, con in cooperation with NutriWest and uh, Lynn Tui, who's a PhD in, uh, in nutrition. And she has developed a program. It's already running. This one's called the FHE Val, and you can upload blood work into it, and it'll give you a printout that says, you know, these are the lifestyle changes. This is the nutrition we would suggest for you. Uh, so that piece is already in place, and then we're adding the genetic place, uh, piece into it as well. This is the methylation pathway. So those of you that, you know, um, I was saying that word methylation. The, the biochemical 
piece of this, this happens at our cellular level at all times of the day and night. Again, on the right-hand side, that, those big circles there, those are the methyl generators, and it works on B12 and folic acid. Those two nutrients turn on methyl generation. So if you have adequate amounts of B12 and folic acid, then you're gonna make neurotransmitters correctly, you're gonna make adrenal hormones correctly, you're going to detox correctly, you're gonna repair DNA and RNA. And one of the biggest concepts with methylation is if you make those little methyl groups, they do this very cool thing. You could have, you all know probably your genetic sort of uh, risks, like your grandparents may have heart disease or cancer or things that run in your family and you're going, ah, I wonder, I wonder if I got those genes. Um, and, and again, the test is gonna tell you that, but those genes are not the cause of disease. So you don't have to be afraid that they're just gonna spontaneously do their thing. They have to be triggered and they have to be triggered by the environment, by some kind of toxin or stress or radiation. But the cool thing about methylation is it protects your genes. It just turns them off, it like, like a protective coating around the genes so it can't be flicked on by the environment. That's the biggest concept um, that is coming out of looking at methylation, the methylation pathways in the body. So that's pretty cool. So if, you know, for me, I've got, again, a cancer gene. I know I do, running in the family, of course, uh, history-wise, but also looking at my genetic report. But I'm not as worried about it because I'm methylating. I know that that gene is not gonna express cancer readily. Uh, I don't smoke, number one, but also I'm methylating properly so it won't express. So that's, that's, pretty, that's a pretty big concept. It's a, I know it's a lot of biochemistry and it's like, wah! But this is what I teach doctors to read uh, around the country and by the end of the seminar, they're well versed in what is happening at the cellular level, how we detox, how we repair, how we make energy out of our food. Those purple balloons that are all through there, those are areas where you can have a genetic variant and a genetic variant will slow down that pathway. So for instance, if you look on this left-hand side, going from glucose to ATP, ATP is our basic unit of energy. It's how, you know, again, how we make energy out of food. If you've got a block right there, that purple balloon in the middle, you're not gonna make energy well, you're actually gonna store your food as fat. So you're gonna have difficulty losing weight and you're gonna be tired. Makes sense, right? It's all kind of logical. And again, here's, here's where um, the DNA gets wound around a histone tail and turned off so that it can't be uh, stimulated by the environment and expressed. So that's a pretty big concept in methylation. But here's the take home. Uh, get your genes tested. It's easy to do. And then if you can get to see um, a methylation practitioner around the country, you can go to my website, which is holisticmethylation.com, and uh, we have a list of practitioners on there. You can also send me a message and say, I'm in Salt Lake City, I need a practitioner, who can you refer me to? And uh, we can get you hooked up, because uh, I think it's, it's super important stuff. Thank you for your time and attention.